Okay, as I was saying, the components of blood should be under homeostatic control. The components of blood should be under homeostatic control. If they are not under homeostatic control, it means the survival of the cells would be a problem. This is what we call disease. They'll be diseased. Now, every homeostasis uh, system, it includes four components. Every homeostatic mechanism or the self-regulating system includes four components. Number one, sensors or detectors which recognize the deviation. Sensors are part of the nervous system. Sensors are part of neuro, trans, uh, neuro or we can say the neural components. And then we have transmission of the message to the control center. Transmission of message can either be through hormones, because hormones are, uh, hormones are chemical messengers. They carry a particular message. And transmission can also be through neurons. Neurons, they carry electrical impulse. Now, transmission of information from the control center to the effectors for collect, uh, correcting the deviation. Okay, effectors can be a muscles, can be a gland. Okay. So that's transmission. And then the last is effectors, which correct the deviation. Now, this, what I've just said, can be shown in form of, of a diagram. This is the normal. Whenever there's a deviation from the normal, it will be sensed by the sensor. The sensor will, will report that deviation to the control center, meaning the brain. The brain will command a particular organ. It can be a kidney, so that it can increase water absorption. Okay, it can be the intestines so that they can increase calcium absorption. Or it can be anything. It will receive command from the brain. And then there will be correction. So that's why I said this is automatic responses. Okay, this is automatic response, which is mainly controlled by the autonomic nervous system. Now, the mechanisms of homeostasis is through what we call feedback signals. Now, there are two types of uh, feedback signals. There's negative feedback and the positive feedback. What's the difference? A negative feedback is one to which the system reacts in such a way as to arrest the change or reverse the direction of the change, okay? If, for example, pH was increasing, the body will react by all means to reduce it. That's a negative feedback. So that's what we mean when we say it's a one in which the system reacts in such a way as to arrest the change or reverse. So after receiving the message, the effectors send negative feedback signals back to the system. Now the system stabilizes its own function and makes an attempt to maintain homeostasis. A good example which I can give is, uh, <clears throat> let's say there is a secretion of a particular hormone. In this case, it's thyroxine. First of all, let me give a brief background of thyroxine. Thyroxine is a hormone released by the thyroid gland. It increases basal metabolic rate. What is basal metabolic rate? These are normal metabolic reactions taking place in the human body, like uh, glucose being oxidized with oxygen to form energy. It's a basal metabolic rate. Lipid synthesis, cholesterol synthesis, uh, neurotransmitter synthesis, these are metabolic reactions. So this hormone, it, it increases this metabolic reaction. So whenever there is increase in thyroxine, okay, the sensors will sense that. When the sensors sense the increase in thyroxine, we don't want high levels of thyroxine. That's dangerous. So 
The sensors who inhibit another hormone called the thyroid stimulating hormone. So this thyroid stimulating hormone is released by the anterior pituitary gland. So it will be inhibited because it's the one that controls the secretion of thyroxine. So when this is inhibited, the levels of uh, thyroxine in the blood will reduce and then until it goes back to the normal level. So in short, this is a homeostatic mechanism. Whenever thyroxine increases, it goes back to normal level. How? The same thyroxine which has increased will have a negative feedback mechanism by inhibiting the secretion of thyroid stimulating hormone. Now, what happens whenever thyroxine decreases? We don't want low levels of thyroxine because we want metabolic rate to be controlled. So what will happen is that the low levels of thyroxine okay, will be a trigger, will be sensed by the thyroid stimulating hormone cells. Therefore, they will start increasing the synthesis and release of thyroid stimulating hormone, which will bind on the thyroid gland and increase the secretion of thyroxine, and it goes back to normal. So this is just an example of many millions examples of hemostasis taking place in the human body. Another example which I can give is uh, water. We have normal water content. Okay? This is normal water content or normal water content. Let's start from here. Whenever there is decrease in water levels, water levels can decrease because somebody vomited, somebody lost blood, or somebody had dangerous diarrhea. So when that happens, it will increase thirst. Thirst is the sensation okay, of feeling dehydrated. It's connected to the, the limbic system, the behavioral system of the person. So this person will start looking for water to drink. But from, from the body-wise, whenever there is decreased levels of water, it will stimulate the osmoreceptors, which are found in the hypothalamus. The osmoreceptors will shrink and start releasing um, substances, chemical substances such as glutamate. Glutamate will stimulate the posterior pituitary gland to release a hormone called ADH. ADH will increase water retention in the kidneys. So, when water is retained, there is no more water content in the body. So this is just a compensatory mechanism. It's just a way to prevent loss of water. We can go on and on to give examples. But let me quickly talk about the positive feedback mechanism, which is the opposite of, which is the opposite of uh, negative feedback mechanism. This one is in which a system reacts in such a way as to increase the intensity of the change in the same direction. This is in which the system reacts in such a way as to increase the intensity of the change in the in same direction. So positive feedback is less common. So the one which is most very common in the human body is negative feedback. Okay. The common homeostatic mechanisms are negative feedback mechanisms. However, it has its own significance, particularly during emergency conditions. One of the positive feedback occurs during blood clotting. Blood clotting is necessary to arrest bleeding during injury, and it occurs in three stages. So if you are asked to give an example of positive feedback mechanism, you can talk of blood clotting. Okay. From here, the person has been injured. Blood starts moving out of the blood vessels outside. There will be formation of prothrombin activator. Okay. The purpose of the prothrombin activator is to convert prothrombin into thrombin. Okay. And then there will be conversion of fibrinogen into fibrin. Because thrombin will convert fibrinogen into fibrin. And then this will stop bleeding. 
Now, this same thrombin, it will have, instead of reducing the, the formation of prothrombin, it will further stimulate the formation of prothrombin. So this is a, a positive feedback. So positive feedback mechanism, coagulation of blood, once formed, thrombin induces the formation of more prothrombin activator. Okay, that's why we are saying this mechanism is used in emergency situation where the body has to be preserved, the life has to be preserved. The other one is labor, onset of labor during childbirth. During childbirth, we know there is contraction of the uterus, okay, in, in readiness for the, for the baby to be expelled. So the movement of the fetus in the cervix will stimulate the mechanical receptors in the cervix, which will further cause dilatation of the cervix. Okay, the cervix is the neck region. When you look at the male, female reproductive uh, system, there's a neck region, the passage from the uterus, it passes through the neck region. So the movement of the uh, fetus through the, the cervix, stimulation of receptors in the cervix, and there are some nerve fibers from the cervix, which goes all the way to the posterior pituitary gland. Discharge of impulses from the receptors, uh, okay. And then transmission to the hypothalamus, release of oxytocin. So oxytocin, instead of uh, reducing the contraction of the uterus, it will further stimulate the contraction of the uterus. So that's a positive feedback mechanism. So this is about homeostasis. Remember that homeostasis is the maintenance of internal environment within, within the body. This is important for the survival of all cells because the cells, they require normal working conditions. And any deviation from homeostasis is due, is causes diseases. And the purpose of a healthy profession or a clinician is to ensure that the body goes back to normal condition, which we call treatment. So we end here. Thank you for your attention.